which brings me to another point, something we've been doing for years, uh, showing that all of the studies, whether it be by the ENA, the NAEMT, uh, you know, Drexel University, anybody that's done a study, um, you know, formally, we've shown that while, you know, great intentions that those studies have been flawed and not flawed because they didn't try to do the study correct, but that there was uh, a culture that existed of underreporting, uh, fair to define, you know, really what was going on. And one of the things that I've, I've said, and I know you've experienced, well, I shouldn't have said, I know you do. I was going to sit there and lead you into that and to let you tell about it as well. But have you not witnessed yourself, us be in classrooms where we can have a room full of people and uh, we ask if they've ever been criminally assaulted once we've defined what a criminal assault is, you know, that drunk or drugged individual who purposefully intended to attack you versus the grandma who didn't mean to. And we have those people raise their hand and then we get 80 to hundred percent of the room with their hands raised stating the fact they've been criminally assaulted. But yet when we ask how many of those formally reported it to their supervisors and or the police, only two to 3% keep their hands up. Would you say that you have witnessed that type of a, of a scenario play out in your classes? Oh, absolutely. Actually, I'll, I'll take you back to exactly how I usually um, ask the question. Um, and, and if you're watching this, uh, feel free to participate. Um, if you've been criminally assaulted on the job, just simply nod. And if you're nodding yourself, fantastic. If you're wondering, have I been criminally assaulted on the job, I'm going to ask you a question that I ask every class that I teach. And it doesn't matter if it's in the hospital or in the EMS or the fire setting. Um, but I'm going to preface it first. If you didn't nod to the fact that you've been criminally assaulted, take note as to why you didn't nod after I go through this little quiz. If you've ever been intentionally spat at or spat upon by someone, raise your left hand. Kip, feel free to participate. <laughs> if you've ever, if you've ever been punched by someone intentionally, not someone that's trying to extubate their tube and is doing something kind of involuntary or in a hypoxic rage, but actually physically been punched at or been struck, raise your right hand. And if you've ever been kicked intentionally, not someone that, that's, that's trying to get away, but someone that intentionally mule kicks you or kicks you to, to, to get away from you because they are trying to be aggressive, you know, go ahead and stand up. And then I, I keep going with this um, to punched, spat on, kicked, um, in, in, uh, grabbed inappropriately. You know, the, the, the female who grabs at a male inappropriately or the male who grabs a female inappropriately or at least inappropriately tries to touch you. If that has happened, Every single one of those situations are a criminal assault. And if you're looking at yourself going, I'm not really sure, I implore you right now to look at your state statutes, which are a statute. This is law. This is the supreme law of your entire state. And if you're looking at this from an EMT or a paramedic or a nurse standpoint, even look further to see if that's a felony <clears throat> assault in your state versus a misdemeanor because it's happening while you're on the job in your uniform and then look at what it's classified as and if you're still going yeah but take this class because we want you to challenge with the yeah buts but we also want you to understand what is legal and every one of those situations we can show chapter and verse in the state um, chapter and verse in probably your own employee handbook what is legal and what is criminal. And every one of those that I mentioned are a criminal assault. And so we get this overwhelming, um, and it just kind of ties back to, you know, what you were talking about earlier about empowering staff and things like that, because now we've, we, we've witnessed is this culture, which, you know, criminal assaults have gone on as part of the job, which we're now finding and we're starting to finally get some of the big boys to, um, you know, talk about this, whether it be the trade magazines or some of the, uh, you know, publications or websites or people actually starting to take notice. And again, you know, huge props to the ENA, huge props to the NAEMT, uh, huge props to Drexel uh, and Jen Taylor out there for, you know, doing their best to help raise awareness for this. And, uh, and actually, I'm going to throw a big shout out to EMS-1 
because they were like really the first to hit it head on. And I mean, really start going, wait a minute, you know, something's not right here and go after it time and time and time again to try to bring awareness. And so now that we've got awareness, uh, the, the issue now is kind of like what you talked about earlier, where we're either, you know, uh, throwing the talk only class to the people or just the technique only class to the people. And they wonder why uh, people are acting like that one fella did when he only gets a 45 minute, you know, section to go, well, this is crap and it's no good. It's not going to work. Why? Because, you know, you haven't got into preach the truth yet to them and they, you haven't given them the ability to see that, first of all, you understand what the real problem is. 